The root of the problem is staring us in the face. Oh, this is this is to get thing. to the bottom, you gotta take it by the horns, you must embrace it. Strike at the roots, my friends, make the politicians fall. We must dispute the mess, the heads of state stop their windfall. One in a series of activities that are happening this week as part of Homelessness Awareness Week. An opportunity for community members to stop, reflect, share stories, consider what are the needs in our community and the solutions that we've been working towards and the solutions we still need to continue to act on. Why does our government always hide the truth? And when you are experiencing poverty, and particularly homelessness, there's a very common experience that people will avoid you. They won't look you in the eye and cross the street so that they can not have to come close to you. Let's when stop. You meet people, meet the person. Actually, see them. Not look through them. See them. I was completely shocked when people that I met on the street, people that I had been conditioned to believe were dangerous or dirty or whatever um, turned out to be my allies. They were the ones that directed me to places where I could obtain food, clothing, hot shower, laundry facilities, basics of, of life. And to this day, many of them are still, I regard as very close, close friends, whether they're housed or not at this point. Um, I just got a room. I got it yesterday. I slept on the floor. It's a nice hardwood floor, and I want to say kudos to the people, uh, to uh, Mark, my new housemate, roommate, and others. That, and I met two of the three roommates. They're awesome people, and I have a safe home. A safe home is one of those really key things. The more difficult way of looking at homelessness is on an individual basis. And I can say that for every person who is homeless, there is a story. Uh, my nickname is Mofo Indian Ken, Mofo Status Indian Ken. Seven Directions. I offer tobacco in the Seven Directions. The most important thing, though, in this ceremony is the direction. Something that was said to me by, by my late grandfather um, a number of years ago. And it was this. It was, if you don't like your lot in life, try losing it all and getting it back again. And I remember he said it to me and I thought, oh man's crazy. I had no idea what he was talking about. The truth is, it was very wise, those were really wise words. Um, the reason I don't think that I understood it was because I didn't want to. At that point in my life, everything was going great. Um, Experiencing poverty can mean a person is one illness, one accident, or one paycheck away from living on the streets. People who are not living in poverty can experience every one of the same problems that people who are homeless experience. Mental health issues, addiction issues, um, illness, all of those can be experienced by somebody who's not poor and they can maintain their housing through whatever they're facing. But if you're poor and you face one of those issues, you are much more at risk of becoming homeless. Stages of homelessness. Most experts say there are three stages of homelessness <coughs> and um, many people are really surprised to realize that they themselves may have been counted as homeless at one time. The first stage is 70% of the people who are homeless. Um, that can happen for many of the reasons that I've already listed, but it, it includes things like a house fire, a natural disaster, or it could be the end of your schooling or your between jobs. I don't know how many people have gone home to live with mom and dad for a couple of months while they got back on their feet. The people who are homeless in stage one are in a heightened state of crisis 
and finding a home is their highest priority. Stage two are when people begin to adapt to living without a home. Now these are people who have lived a little bit longer, and it depends on, on who they are and where they are and how long that is. But they've been unable to find a home, and the resources are running out. So their family and friends have helped them all they can and are saying, you know, we've had enough of you sleeping on our couch. It really is time to find another place. Um, these people are still really highly motivated to find a home, but at this point, they need some help. They can't do it on their own. A few short months, the home was gone, the car was gone, possessions were gone. And I was facing a very real prospect. I, I'd run out of options with, uh, in terms of getting support from my, uh, the rest of my family or, or friends. <coughs> and stage three homeless are what we call chronically homeless. These are people who have been homeless a year or more. Um, they've been homeless long enough to experience what's called social decompensation. So for these people, they've, they've adopted, they've given up on finding a home. Now what they're looking for is, where is my next meal going to be? Where am I going to spend the night tonight? It doesn't mean they don't want to be housed, it just means they've given up home. So for the next three years, I bounced between shelters, the streets, the out of the cold. And a lot of this housing was extremely substandard in, in quality. Um, moldy walls, you know, plumbing that didn't work, you, you name it. You see it. Uh, take joy in the little things. Having an eyeglass case. My bag. This bag here. I need to get a new bag, but I never leave a room dirty. So I make sure that everything in the room I look behind me. And it's the other thing I, I learned really was profound to me was that if I couldn't fit it into a backpack, I probably didn't need it. And I've said that before. Um, and it's true. Um, it really nothing like you know being kicked down a bit to put things in perspective. So the, all that stuff I've been chasing all those years, all of a sudden it meant nothing. And um, I think Ken also alluded to that a bit too. About that just it's not important. Live simply. The root of the problem is staring us in the face. To get to the bottom, you gotta take it by the horns. You must embrace it. Strike at the roots, my friend. Politicians fall. We must dispute the men, the heads of state. High cost to homelessness, too, that people don't realize. Most people think the only cost for homelessness is the cost of shelters, but that's not true. One of the biggest areas of expense for us as a society is hospitalization and. Um, I, health um, costs. Then there was a couple of other other things that happened. One was I started watching people around me that that were living that same in that same situation. Um, they were living uh, that homeless experience. Many of whom had been doing so for 15, 20, 25 years, and they started dying. They got sick and they died. And many of them at a really early age. Um, you know, 45 years of age, and <laughs> I realized that, yeah, homelessness isn't good for your health. Um, imagine that. Um, as, I, as I said, I really don't like doing this. I'm uncomfortable standing here in public. Um, I don't, you know, I've gotten kind of experience for you, but not, I don't enjoy it. And every year I ask people to do stuff that I know is really, really hard. Both in terms of speaking in public, because that's not comfortable for most people, and talking about themselves. And sometimes the worst memories of their lives. That started a whole world of things where I started uh, being able to, I started doing a lot of public speaking and I, and I started telling my story and I started trying to reach out to people in the community because by telling my story, we create awareness. That's what this week is all about. It's, it's all about creating awareness. It's the start. I, through that process, I've met a lot of really, really neat people, um, including a, a professor at, at uh, 
in the Faculty of Social Work um, at Wilfrid Laurier, who was so supportive. And despite the fact that I was still struggling within, between the streets and couch serving and precarious housing, she never looked at me funny. She never looked down on that. She looked at me as a person that had a creative idea that, that was something that she was enthusiastic about. Like, it, so it didn't matter whether that, that project ever got completed. Maybe one of these days it will. But it started me on a... On how a the function path. has changed, and how the Gautam community has changed, to be able to be more accepting of the people that are that are actually living and sharing the Gautam community. As far as supporting people, um, right now, our most recent stat, I think, is we have about 620 people that we are currently supporting. So that's, uh, it's, it's quite a huge number. They're not all people who are currently experiencing homelessness, uh, but people who have either been homeless in the past, or are at serious risk of becoming homeless again. So it's, um, and, and the supports that we give are anything from, you know, a simple housing search. Uh, reconnecting people with their family doctors is also huge. And, and building relationships with hospitals. So every time we take somebody to the, to the ER, um, we make sure that that's actually what's needed. If it's not, then we're actually making an appointment with a family doctor if that's I think possible. The other, uh, the other thing to mention is the existing uh, supports among the community of people who are experiencing homelessness. Uh, Ken mentioned just um, being a formal outreach worker, and there are, there are many people who, who fit that role. Um, we're around. The root of the problem is staring at uh, more affordable housing is, is needed. Um, Back in 99, my organization, the Social Planning Council, did some background research to look at homelessness and to really try to understand what was happening in our community. We've always had an issue of affordable housing, and that affordable housing issue really started to uh, reach a critical level in the 90s when social assistance rates were cut, there was a uh, recession and challenges for people finding work. I'm Leave of the day, we don't need to raise awareness for homelessness because there is no homelessness. Okay. It's okay. not enough for me to be an advocate. It's not enough for the professionals to talk to the government. Okay. It's not enough for the agencies to try to build housing. It takes a society. It takes the country. And as long as we look at it as someone else's job, you that is the government's, we're not really going to solve it. Um, in conclusion, in 2011, there were 3,133 people in Waterloo Region who stayed at shelters. In 2012, we know there were even more. We had a 17.5% increase in the people staying at, out of the cold. And the other shelters also had increases, and I don't know what those amounts were. So, and that only includes the people who access the helps. That doesn't include the people who are sleeping on somebody's couch. That doesn't include the people who have refused help at the shelters and who are sleeping on the streets. So what I would ask people to do is take action. Lobby your politicians to end poverty and provide housing that is affordable. Encourage a living wage. Take into account poverty reduction and housing policies whenever you vote. And please remember the human cost of tax cuts. Every cut in taxes means a cut in program funding. And please, please support housing projects in your neighborhoods. Remember, we all deserve a home. Thank you. And now is the time to ask yourself, what do I do? I have said before somewhere that it takes two people to end homelessness, me and you. Okay. I'm here. What about you? As long as, um, no matter how many people I'm talking to, it comes down to two, me and you. The root of the problem is staring us in the face. To get to the bottom, Gotta take it by the horns, you must embrace it. Strike at the roots, my friends, make the politicians fall. We must dispute the men, the heads of state style.
up their windfall. 